Welcome back to the Real Business Roundtable. I feel like there should be applause, but it's okay. Yeah, there we go. Today, it may you know it may not be too obvious, but I, we're gonna do some Halloween stuff. We're gonna talk about some sales nightmares, yeah. which I think fits. I think fits. We're gonna have sales nightmares, business nightmares. A couple episodes are gonna come out around this holiday weekend. Um, well, first I want to talk about why, why is Halloween on a Monday? I know it's kind of crazy. It sucks. It's um, but whatever. Yeah, no, it's no big deal. But you know, sales nightmares. That's where we're gonna. Oh shit. Well, we got that. We got that far. Oh shit. That's yeah, getting real now. Oh wow. Oh, it's getting real now. <laughs> Yo, this is so funny. This is great. You gotta feel the vibe. I feel the vibe. All right, yeah. So sales nightmares. That's what we're talking about today. I feel like it fits the occasion. Nightmares. I feel like you know. I feel like it'd be, huh? Nightmares. Yeah, nightmares. Is that what I said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, oh my god, I feel like. I feel like I'm vaping over here. I'm like inhaling this shit. <laughs> oh my God, look at this shit, yo. Oh, this is so funny. Crazy. Yo, let's just roll with it, honestly. Let's just. Yo, it's actually getting in my mouth. This is great. It's. All right, bet. This is not going to set off any alarms, right? Oh, can you even not. see it? Can you even see? Yeah, we can see. Can he see us? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, so we want to talk about sales nightmares. Hell yeah. From an operational standpoint, <laughs> experience standpoint. <laughs> Yo, you can't see us at all. All right, let's roll with it. So there's so many different, you know, sales is, I fucking love it, right? It's our life. It's, it's, the, it's the, you know, it's what we do, but it's not always good, right? There's, oh, man, you know, there's... there's there's ups and downs and there are surprises and sometimes absolute nightmares. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we've been through it all. We've we've been through it all for sure. Oh, yeah. Good and bad. But today we're talking about the bad. So I want to start off with I know you want to talk about ghosting, but let's just talk about like constant rejection. And, you know, maybe we can add in a little bit like how do you deal with that? Like just. Yeah. So like you'll you know you'll talk to somebody that has a great business lots of opportunity for them to grow and you're literally ready to roll to help them you know as a growth consultant and they're just they switch and then they're neg like they spoke to somebody from the first meeting after and after that first meeting they spoke to someone that was like negative or whatever and then they just reject negative 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 and that's like the worst experience when you have somebody that's motivated and they just flip like a switch, maybe it's a friend, a family member, a spouse, whoever, yeah. and they just completely shift their mindset. And you're like trying to coach them on the right mindset, the what, what to expect. You're painting the picture and you're just in this big loophole. I've had stuff like that go on for two, three, four years or more. And that, Straight, yeah. that's an absolute nightmare. It's, it's extremely frustrating because you know that you can do a great job for them. You know, it, it, it makes me, you can't, you can't, I, I can't help but laugh at some situations where like, they don't really have a reason. They don't have an excuse and they just, they're just constant rejection. They're like, no, no, we don't, we don't think this is a fit. It's like, we all know that this is a good fit for you. Yeah. Like, you'll, you know, you'll, in the time span that I've been told, no, I've worked with someone in a similar industry, blew their shit up, showed them screenshots and they're still like, no. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, it's crazy. This person just made X amount of million, million of dollars or whatever. Because of the, pro yeah, it's, it's crazy. But you know, how do you deal with it? I mean, how do you, how, how do you like, do you just, so, okay. So how about this? When they're constantly rejecting, is there a point where you're like, okay, there's no, there, there's, there's nothing left. Do you just leave it alone? Yeah. I just, what I do in my CRM, <laughs> Google <laughs> calendar, yeah. um, I will take it. And I'll push it out. I'll touch base with them twice a year, every yeah. six months. But the more bullshit negativity they give me, I push it out to maybe once a year. Yeah. Once a year. I just check in. Hey. Just checking uh, in. The best question to ask somebody is, how'd your year go? Yeah. How did your season go? So you know what I do? I, I actually, sometimes in those situations, I take advantage of their rejection and I kind of make jokes about it occasionally. Like I'll be like, I, like I'll just, so what, what I'll do to, I'm just, I'm taking off this glove because it's kind of getting in the way, but I'll leave it on the table so that it's kind of, yeah, you know, I was going to take my mask off so people can, 
But, you know, when it comes to constant rejection, I like sometimes I'll make jokes out of it. Like, like I'll hit them up with like a case study, right? If they say no, I'll hit them up with a case study and I'll be like, I'll be like, listen, I know you're not going to sign up with us, right? It's not happening. But here, look at what they're doing. Look at what your competitor or not competitor, but look at what someone in the similar industry and the same industry has done. Yes. And you make jokes about it. You know, honestly, take advantage of rejection. When someone is constantly rejecting, you know, create a relationship out of that, you know, make a joke out of it, make it more of a good experience rather than them. Rather, like, don't keep trying. If there's no interest and they keep rejecting, don't keep trying because then you're just going to bother them. Take it as an opportunity to create a relationship with them. You know, maybe, you know, send them a joke. Like, I think I've mentioned this before. Like, sometimes I'll, if I know that someone who's rejecting like cigars and they know I'm going to keep trying to get them into a meeting, they know I'm going to keep trying to get in front of them. You know, first of all, they're going to respect that persistence. They're going to respect that devotion. But, you know, I'll send them a picture of me smoking a cigar and I'll be like, hey, I know you're a fan. Like, you're missing out. You know, take advantage of that. Come you know, join us. Yeah, fear yeah, of missing yeah, out. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and they laugh at it and they say, oh, that's a nice cigar. You know, start up another, uh, you know, another uh, conversation around that where it's not business. It's just kind of creating that relationship Casual. or golfing. You know, if you're, mm-hmm. you, can, you can go golfing or just if you know something that they enjoy throughout your interactions with them, go do that thing. Take a picture of it. Send it to them. Say, hey, you're missing out. Would love to meet with you soon. Or, hey, come join us, you know. Don't be all businessy. Don't like, don't be pushy. Just, you know, as a joke, like, Hey, like you're missing out on this. That's, mm-hmm. that's sometimes what I would do in reg- with rejection, but God, dude, rejection can be horrible. I want to share a scary story. A rejection story? Mm, not rejection. It's more of, um, misquoting. Okay. So for all the business owners watching, if you have employees and you, especially if you have salespeople, that are writing up contracts, proposals. Uh, every once in a while, you might something might slip through the cracks where a salesperson accidentally gives a little bit too much to someone where it's not properly quoted. So one of the worst stories I have for misquoting is we brought on a client that was quoted a certain amount for digital marketing services And we're working with them. We're doing all this stuff. And it just hits us. And we're like, I was like, who wrote this up? I, you know, it was one of my salespeople. Yeah. And the person was in a metro, a a metro, a major metropolitan area. As you know, search engine optimization is very difficult. Uh, Keywords tend to be very expensive when it, on clicks and stuff like that. Yeah. And the salesperson wrote it up and we're working with them and it ended up being way more costly not talking about what we charge retail our costs surpassed what the client was paying us and we had to bend over backwards do all this stuff and i'm looking at what was written up and i go oh my god like we had to honor the contract yeah but every month that went by we were at a loss because of how extremely difficult it was for that. So you know, for people that don't know what I'm talking about, if someone's in a major metropolitan, let's say New York City, Boston, Los Angeles, digital marketing in respect to like running ads and things like that tend to be way more costly because you have way more competition. It's a saturated market. competition in that area. And it was written up as if it was in some small town in, you know, in uh, North Dakota or something like that. It yeah. was not done correctly and we obviously we had to coach that person that wrote up that deal but we had to honor it that was crazy yeah no you, you have to that's some i mean honestly that kind of that ties into another situation that's kind of a nightmare is just like the just you know quote issues or you know like um what is it called errors like quote errors or or um, you know, contract errors or stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Like you have to stick to it and you have to maybe some, in some situations you got to eat it. I had a client that was honest. We wrote it up and we missed a big piece that basically said we were going to provide this level of service. And it, at the, the final dollar amount, there was a good chunk, a good chunk of cash missing. And he was honest enough to come forward. And he goes, Hey, I think you missed something. Yeah. And I was extremely grateful of that. Not everyone would do that but yeah yeah no so so to go back to to rejection a little bit dude yeah sometimes in those rejection situations like the one thing that i hate about them so much 
and I, we have so many stories that go off of this is is how just how long they they get you get dragged along you just get dragged as a salesperson it's brutal there's no answer you can't get an answer and yeah. it's just you just you <laughs> and you just get dragged and it's I, like I, you don't know what to do you're trying to create that relationship and sometimes it just doesn't work out and you have to know when to step away honestly. yeah or, or the best thing to do is to just try to uncover the true underlying reason why they're pushing you off you say hey is it the term or is it the monthly investment? Because we can always start out smaller rather than doing nothing. Because it's better to break the ice and do something with the client, show them progress at a smaller level, and grow from there. Yeah. But some of the some of these prospects won't even bite at that. I'm like, yeah. let me let me put an extra couple hundred thousand in your pocket. Oh no no no, we're not there yet. And I'm like, dude, like, what are you waiting for? You yeah. just told me you were interested. Yeah. But I I got a crazy story for you. Okay. So we had a client that was with us for a long time, loved working with us. Um, we had a sales guy that was working with us, and it was time for their renewal. And the sales guy came in, and he gave us a renewal, and it was a significant, it was like triple or double of what they were paying. I said, wow, that's a crazy renewal. Wow. And we're looking at it, and I said, okay, great. So then the sales guy was like, let me get the commission. I was like, well, this is a huge deal. Yeah. Let me confirm it. Yeah. So I call the client and he had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. I was like, hey, I just, I want to book your kickoff meeting. I want to get, you know, do a refresh. This was already a client that was with us for three years. He renewed with us. Hey, thank you for renewing with us. He goes, what, what, what are you talking about? I said, you just renewed with us for X amount of dollars. He goes, uh, hey, let me get back to you. He acted weird and he hung up. So I'm looking at the sales guy. He's basically like, hey, I want my commission. And I said, listen, man, the client seems uncertain about this. What happened? Yeah. And I'm, look, I'm looking at a signed document. And I'm like, what? as a business owner, what do I do here? Because state law, you've got to pay your employees. And I'm like, what the hell do I do? If this renewal is not active or real, yeah. what do I do in this situation? Um, I ended up getting so nervous, I got legal counsel. Just a quick phone call to yeah, an attorney. Course, I yeah. don't, I barely use attorneys. I just, I called them to get, I was like, dude, I'm in a weird, weird situation. It was a nightmare. Yeah. And I'm like, I got a guy that I owe X amount of dollars in commission and the client saying it, it didn't confirm or deny, but he acted very strange. So I ended up calling the, pro the client's wife. She's like, no, 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 we're not renewing. I got the confirmation. Then I called the husband. He goes, listen, I'm not getting into this. And I go, what are we doing? Are we moving forward or are we not? I go, dude, just tell me. I go, I need confirmation. Yeah. But the person's name on the contract was the gentleman, yeah. not the wife. So I have this guy freaking out, going, pay me my commission. And uh, the attorney advised us. He said, you're better off just cutting him, a, negotiate some kind of check to settle it. Yeah. Talk about, like, explain the situation. Yeah. So it went from owing, owing him X or say 3X. And I went to him. I said, listen, man, I don't know where this signed agreement came from, but I need to settle this matter right now because the client is not moving forward. So long story short, I had to cut him a check basically out of our pocket, call it a day and it's a wash. And he moved on, he went somewhere else. But like, and it really, it really tarnished that relationship because he knew something happened. Mm -hmm. I knew something happened. He didn't want to get involved. He was like, he didn't want to get his, anyone in trouble. He was yeah. putting his hands up and I'm like, dude, I got this signed agreement. What the F is going on? That's a, as a business owner, that is a nightmare. Yeah. And if you if you have salespeople, make sure in your employment agreements you have, in respect to commissions, that funds have to be received. They have to be collected at least the first one or two payments before a commission is issued. Yeah. Because you never know what happened there. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this and, you know, I don't want to make, I don't want to point fingers or make any claims, but it was weird.
and it was a so very just, bad situation. Shitty salespeople. I, yeah. I, I can say it. Shitty salespeople. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. He, 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 he was no, no, no. He was good. I just it's don't green. know what happened. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what yeah. happened. I don't. Yeah, that, no, I, know I don't know what happened. But it was. <laughs> Dumb situation. I was like, dude, you got me in a bad spot. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. if I called the client and they're like, yeah, gung ho, absolutely. Let me write that check. Bang. Mm -hmm. There you go. Congrats. Mm -hmm. I got a client going, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. All right. Ready? <laughs> I have another one. Buyer's remorse. Oh. <laughs> that was like a bullet to the heart. <laughs> It always is. Dude, it always is. is. Buyer's remorse it's is like the worst. It's like they sleep on it and they're like, I can't do this. Yeah, it's, it's I, I can't. I don't want to be successful. It's like I, I don't understand that. I've had people get that and I get so angry or so frustrated that I'm like, what can I do to keep you on board so I can just show you what we can do? Like, I, I'm, I get so, I'm, it, it, it affects my ego yeah. and my confidence. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, wait, wait, do you want to hit this goal? And I, I'll work something out with them. 50% of the time they'll go, all right, let's do that. And it's usually like, I'm working for pennies. Yeah. But my goal is to crack the ice. Yeah, of course. And them see and go, shit. You know, but the, but the buyer remorse ones, oh. Dude, so before I get into that, one thing that, you know, it kind of leads into it is, um, oh my God, I forgot what it's called. It's, um, you know, outside sources. So like outside opinions, influences. outside influences, right? So like you'll, let's say you're a salesperson, right? And you're going and you're pitching to this person and they go, I got to talk to my wife. I got to talk to my business partner. I got to talk to my accountant. I got to talk to all these people who don't understand what we're saying. Yes. And you know, I get it. I do. You want to talk to people. You want to make sure that it's the right decision. And that's a hundred percent, you know, understandable. But in some situations, you're not going to be able to to express the opportunity the same way that you know we would or the salespeople yeah. would and you know and then those people are thinking okay how much does it cost and that's too much to people sometimes and you know some people just can't handle they that. don't realize what they we're going to bring to the table they don't realize they don't they don't so they see the amount going out they don't think about the amount that could come in like, and so yeah. yeah like literally i just had a text message convo with one of our clients today very very su uh, a successful client and um he shows his appreciation. He gives me the thumbs up on the text message, but we have his inbound leads coming in like water, flowing, flowing, flowing. And it, stuff like that, when I see those big successes happen for clients, and I think about the patience that were required to get there, that person that didn't even break the ice yet, I'm like, dude, you have no idea what you're missing. Yeah. If I took 500 grand and put it in your pocket right now, you would absolutely move forward. Think like that. Think about what we could bring to the table for yeah. growth. But sometimes people just get so nervous and they get cold feet. Yeah. And I get it. I try, I try to be, um, you know, I try to be uh, sensitive to that. Like, let's say they're having some kind of financial issue. I'll try to figure something out to push them through that hump. Go Get over that hump. Because you know it's what's best for their business. Dude, I, I know what we're capable of. And it's, it's mind-blowing, some of the things that we've done. So I'm even more confident. And sometimes, most of the time, when I convey that confidence, people can see it and they yeah. feel it and they're like, shit, maybe I should. Yeah. Or they might talk to a few people we worked with and they're like, all right, let's go. Yeah. So it's always good. When someone has cold feet, mm -hmm. I was just buyer's say. remorse, try to save it somehow by helping them with whatever it, the roadblock is that's stopping them and make those feet warm. You got to help them understand. Yeah. You got to help them understand. You got to, yeah, you got to give them toes. You, you got to give them a case study. You got to, you got to walk them through the, the idea. You have to show them the, the dream. You have to, and you paint have to the sell picture. them the dream. You have to paint the picture for them and help them understand that this is an investment. This is something that is going to help you. If you look at the long-term goal, yeah. So also know. don't focus on the upfront investment. No, I mean, yeah, but that's and, and for the business owner. Yeah. Anybody that buys a stock, like forgive me, I'll give another analogy. Somebody's like that buys a stock and they're like, oh, geez, I just dropped 500 bucks. But they say that 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 stock goes up 10x over the next five years. You see, you paint the picture, have the vision. So if you have cold feet or you're nervous about making an investment to grow your business, Think about the end goal. I know I always say that, but that's and a big, big thing with me is yeah. focus on the goal. And also at the same time, as a as a, a, a contractor and as a prospect, you have to find a middle ground too. You know, it's not always like, you know, 
going to go exactly how everyone plans it is, but you got to find a middle ground because you want to make that investment into your company. You want to grow your company, but then, yeah, you just, you, there's a middle ground. You got to, you got to find the middle ground. What is that called? When you compromise, compromise, you yeah, got to compromise. You got to compromise. Yeah. The smoke's getting to my head, bro. It's crazy, <laughs> but it's not smoke. It's a fog. Machine. No, it's a fog. It's fog. Oh, he's doing more. Ah, shit. He's doing more squirts. We got some more squirts. <laughs> squirts. He just hits it with a quick squirt. He's like, bap, bap, bap. Oh, yeah. I wonder how this is going to translate. Oh, look at that. I feel like. Welcome to my lair. I got a nightmare story for you. A night oh, a sales nightmare? Yeah. Uh-oh. A, a sales guy nightmare. Um, and I will never name names. I'll never shame anybody. No, we don't want to shame um, It's less. But I, I had an interesting situation where I had a guy. And again, I'm not naming names. I had a guy come on board as a sales guy. He worked for another agency, showed me incre incredible numbers. Mm -hmm. And he came on board and he was working remote. And um, he didn't have many questions. And my business partner was like, why isn't he asking you questions? I'm like, he's turnkey. He's from another agency. Yeah. He doesn't need to be taught shit. That's what you thought at least. I go, he doesn't need to be taught shit. I was defending him. Yeah. And my business partner, who, again, was supposed to be a police officer, he's got that brain. He can detect yeah. bullshit from a mile away. Yeah. He's like, he goes, why isn't he asking us questions? Why isn't he really checking in? So, like, when I did check in with him, I always had my alert up. And I'm like, what's going on? Hey, who are you talking to? And how can I say this? So, he said that a couple of prospects that were going to be signing up with us were XYZ Company. Mm -hmm. So I took the initiative to reach out to those companies and thank them for their business. They had no fucking idea who, <laughs> who I was or what the hell was going. They go, what? And I was like, let me shoot you a quick email. What's your email? I got the email, fired off an email just so I had some proof. Yeah. Sent them an email. I say, I understand that. I, sorry for the confusion. I understand that you were, you were planning on moving forward with our program. Um, can you confirm that you have no intention on moving forward with us? They would write back stuff like, I don't know who you are. I have no intention of moving forward. What is this all about? And I save it. And then the other one, same thing. So then, you know, the, the curiosity, curiosity started, started to happen. And um, the computer equipment that they were using was company owned. And oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So our, our, our IT guy was like, hey, put this software in and you can see everything that they're doing on a day to day basis. So it was our equipment. So we put some monitoring software on there just to see, you know, production, what's going on. Um, we don't normally do that. It was just because of all this weird, these weird signs. And we put the software on there. Yeah. So, the, you know, there's several softwares out there so you can monitor. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are these guys doing? <laughs> so as, as an employer, you get hit up by all these different software companies that say you want to monitor um, uh, employee productivity. Use this. For the record, we don't use any of that. Yeah. I just feel like it's too invasive. It is. Yeah. But I don't I don't do that. It was this one situation where we had all these red flags and I said, I, I just I need to see what's going on. Just for reassurance. Yeah, so we it was our equipment. We had um, our own monitoring software, and we could see what was going on on a day-to-day -day basis, and it was complete bullshit. It was no work was being done. Um, I checked in with the, the salesperson. How many emails do you send out a day? And he's like, oh, dude, I send out 80. And I'm like, we look. We it, By the way, we can see all the company emails. So I had my guy go in pull up his emails. He sent out one email. It, wow. Okay. And this is a guy that's collecting a salary yeah. and everything. And it was, I was like, Oh my God. And I tried to, again, I got some professional counsel. I was like, what do I do in this situation? I, and he goes, collect as much proof as you can. Mm -hmm. And then what we did was we presented all the proof to him. And basically he, you know, he basically ghosted us. We never saw him again, but yeah. that was a effing nightmare. It was crazy. Like I, I was like, dude, like Waste of money, waste of yeah, time, waste of yeah, yeah, but like, resources. But, like, but, like, but then, then, I, then my gears start to turn. Like, did you really bring in those numbers at that other agency? Like, what? Did you call that agency? I did. After I called angry, I was like, hey, you told me that you would hire this guy again. This guy just, 
basically did nothing for months. Yeah. Months. Mm -hmm. Prospects were saying they didn't even know who he was. It was a competitor agency? It was a competitive agency, yeah. Some people are like that. But I, I don't know what... That's a... I don't know. I don't... Yeah, I just... Yeah. It's still a mystery yeah. to, this, <laughs> to this day. I just don't... I don't know the whole story. And I was very reserved on how I explain that story because I don't want to shame anybody. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe he was going through some stuff. I yeah, you never know. Whatever. You got to give people the benefit but of the doubt But as, as an employer, I'm like, what the f*** is going on? Like, yeah. dude, like I'm paying you and I don't see any evidence of work going on. Like, holy crap. Yeah. And I was the one like defending him. My business partner was like, dude, I smell bullshit. I smell bullshit. I'm like, no, you know, let's not, let's leave him alone. Yeah. Let's not breathe down his neck. Yeah. And I, I, he was right. <laughs> Jay was right. <laughs> got to trust that gut sometimes. Yeah, he's got the mega gut. Like he's got, he can detect anything. I think yeah. he's pot alien. <laughs> no, dude, he's got the like sixth sense. So another one, yeah, another nightmare that we deal with probably, I mean, on a daily basis is gatekeepers. Oh. And I know some people are like, oh, gatekeepers aren't a thing anymore. Come on, man. You're not making calls. You got to be careful with gatekeepers because let's say you have a, a conversation with the owner. And you're trying to get back to the owner. Say you didn't get his mobile phone. Yeah. And the gatekeeper will just pigeonhole you into just being a cold call. And you're like, no, no, no. We've dealt with him before. And you have to watch your attitude because they, oh. may, they may provoke you into getting pissed off. So then they could go to the guy that liked you and say, oh, he's so rude. And then now that <laughs> prospect hates you. Yo, but there's sometimes like what, what I hear constantly is... They're in a meeting right now. Can I take a message? Constantly, yeah. They're in a meeting right now. Can I take a message? Like, he's not in a meeting that much. Like, if you're in a no. meeting that much, good for you. Honestly. We're flying down to Orlando. <laughs> no. Like, what up, Eminem? <laughs> you in a meeting? You in a meeting? <laughs> Yeah, but all, oh, shit. all I hear all day long is, they're in a meeting. Can I take a message? So, I don't want to leave a message so you, anymore. Hey, Never leave a message. Hey, so Jake and, Jake and I heard about the Orlando, Florida market. Well, just the Florida market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we go down there, and we meet with this VP of marketing. Meetings went fantastic. He goes, oh, my goodness. And he's, like, all impressed and in the meeting. And he's like, oh, absolutely. And we offered him an exclusive. And I go, hey, timing is critical here. We want to work with you, da, da, da. And ready? Ghosted. Ghosted. <laughs> it, went, it went from him almost dancing in the meeting. Oh, yeah. Just like all excited. <laughs> just like uh, just, just dancing in the meeting. So excited. And we were looking at each other like, we're going to get this. And then <sighs> we, it was so bad. Our flight was like what it, our flight was coming up and we were parked outside across the oh street oh my god no yeah we looking at we, the place ready 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 <laughs> ready so we had so we rented a nice car when we were down there right we went, we rented a, a model x a Dude. really nice perform whatever you would at the top of the line model x uh and and we were we were we were going i, I don't know we had something that we were i think it was the last night that we were out in florida and we were just sitting there in the parking lot because we heard that all of the all owners, the owners everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. is there at them in the we office. Saw the, we saw the meeting. AMG Mercedes we saw outside. All their cars. Yeah. And like we sound like uh, this is sales, right? Whatever. Fuck it. We're sitting in a parking lot that's about a third of a mile away. We're sitting in a parking lot just waiting for the very, very nice gatekeeper, the very nice secretary. She was giving us updates. She was like, yes, they're in a meeting right now. They want to meet, they want to meet with you. Yes. We were waiting for it. And, and we we're said, like, our flight's tomorrow morning. Our flight's tomorrow morning. Let's get this going. So we're sitting in that parking lot. We found out in the Model X, they have a beat maker. <laughs> yeah, we were just sitting there waiting and waiting. We're just we're sitting there. We're both looking at the middle screen, just playing with beats. Just making beats and shit. Waiting and waiting. We're like, well, we're going to have this meeting. And we literally see all the high-end cars all in in the driveway there was like a white amg mercedes yeah, yeah, yeah. a caddy yeah all nice cars to, yeah so i'm like dude those are the owners so like we're like we're like far away we didn't have binoculars but no. we're like far away <laughs> we're like we're staking the place out because i wanted to be ready to we get just there. it was a situation where it was like okay let's preface this because that guy who we met with who who had who was like the right hand man of the decision maker was very interested. Wicked he said, interested. He said, he said, we want this before you leave. He said it with his own mouth. We want this before you leave. We want to take advantage of this. This is a great market to use this in, which we agree with. Yes. And we were like, yes, this is fantastic. Like, yes, 
let's get this going before we leave because once we leave, we're not going to come back for a couple months. Ooh. Ooh. But complete you know, goat. It, yeah. it got to the point where I tried to connect with him on Facebook. We didn't have his mobile number. He had an Instagram page and then a Facebook. I tried to like friend request him. Like we had no line of communication. Nothing. We just had the main line with the gatekeeper. Wait, wait. Should we do? Wait. Should we try to call and show? I know exactly what's going to happen. No. Yeah. Yeah. On the podcast, I want to call him right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Let's see how this works. So for this show, we are going to call him right now, so you guys can see what's going on. The best gatekeepers in the world. The perpetual meeting. That never happens. Topic. So they didn't end up answering. You know, that's fine. We're, you know, I'd like to make some calls on this, um, on this podcast. I want to like show people like how we do, like, like get some, you know, real calls in and, and stuff like that. But what's like one more sales nightmare thing before we close it off? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all over him. It's not even near me. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Uh, um, what's what's one more though? Like what's like one more sales nightmare? I mean, I'm pretty sure we covered a lot of it. All the things that we said were pretty fucked up. I'm trying to think. Oh, oh. I once t- okay. So one time I had a sales guy that had a really hot temper. Oh, he was a yeah. hothead. He was a hothead. He'd be hitting the phones, following up on leads, and he would be losing his shit on people, representing yeah, uh, yeah. the comp. Like, I'm like, dude. So this is what happened. I got a I got a call from somebody. They said, "Hi, is this X Y Z?" And I said, "Yeah." I said, "They said your salesperson blank um, just left an in- interesting voicemail on my my voicemail," um, and I said, "Do you care to share?" So he sent me from his iPhone, the voicemail that was left. And he was like, you MF, you this, your wife that, bat, bat, bat. I was like, I'm listening to this voicemail and I'm in shock. And I was like, I ended up sending him edible arrangements with like chocolates and and fruit. Because as a, as a yeah, I'm like so I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> and I had to go down did the sales office and I was like, dude, you can't do that. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, and I played it and he's like, Oh, F that guy, blah, blah. I go, dude, you can't, what you can't, f- you're representing the if company. A, if a prospect is, is just, if they say something rude or whatever, be the bigger man or the bigger woman and just bow out respectfully and move on. You don't need to go back and forth. You don't need to cuss. You just, Holy crap. And that just, the, I was so like nervous. I was like, oh my God. If you heard this voicemail, mm-hmm. it would freak you out. Like being a business owner and, and hearing like that one of your take, employees yeah, just said yeah. that to somebody. Holy shit. I was scared shitless for like weeks. And I called him and he got the edible arrangements and he laughed and he thanked me. And he goes, dude, it's okay. It's okay. I'm like, all right, please. Like, damn. Man, I heard at least that- he understood. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, that's, there's a lot of, there's a lot more that we could talk about. I could talk about sales nightmares all day long. But next we're Halloween, getting, we will. Yeah, next Halloween, we'll continue this conversation. We'll, we'll but, gather up the stories this oh year, God. in 2023. Yeah, yeah, we'll show that. <laughs> but that is going to end the first episode of the Halloween weekend Yeah. episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Special. Give me, give me that fog. Give me some more fog. Give me some more fog. Thank you so much for watching. This episode, the the Halloween episode of special of Real Business Roundtable. I like the fun aspect of this. <laughs> if you want to find any updates, clips, go to Instagram, Real Business Roundtable. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Share your sales nightmares. Hit us up on the DM. Yeah, turn on post notifications so that you get notified every time we post a new video. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out.